Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this time we're going to talk about why you are not finding subdomain takeovers like everybody else. So this video is going to be about subdomain takeovers, kind of really quickly what they are, but then more importantly, why you're not finding them and a little more in depth on how you might be able to find more if it's something you're interested in, especially for some of you people that are interested in automation. It's one of those things that's probably a good idea to automate if you plan on keeping up with the people who are looking for them. So first things first, subdomain takeover is basically using DNS records of some kind or another, which we'll go into later, to take over a subdomain or domain that someone owns because they left basically a dangling DNS record that no longer is there that you have the ability to grab and make your own, which would lead to phishing campaigns or defacing or cookie stealing, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's more on that uh, on other resources on the internet. I would encourage you, if you're just learning about subdomain takeovers, to go look at stuff by Franz Rosen, I think has a couple talks and blogs on it. Um, and then Zero X Patrick as well has a whole, I think, four or five blog posts on all the different kind of subdomain takeovers. So go check that out as well. Um, I'm going to kind of talk about why you aren't finding them, even though maybe you're looking for them just like everybody else. So the first thing that we'll just get out of the way is there's about nine or 10 different tools you can find on the internet that all say they hunt for subdomain takeovers and all this kind of stuff. 90% of them, first of all, only focus on what's called CNAME subdomain takeovers, which means you're checking the DNS records, looking for a CNAME, and then that CNAME, if it's a vulnerable service, uh, it will go try and find a fingerprint, which means like a default landing page or something like that. That means that the page might be able to be grabbed. Why they don't work for you? Two reasons. One is because maybe they don't have all the fingerprints that are out there now because they're not updated. Some are two years old, three years old or more. Um, or two is they're actually updated but they either have the wrong fingerprints or they're looking in the wrong place or there's an error uh, in finding the C name or something like that. So I've run into both testing other tools, um, which led me to making my own and that's kind of why I wanted to talk about it. Uh, the third reason actually to put something in there is that you're using nuclei templates. We've talked about it before using default nuclei templates probably won't get you anywhere. Um, some of those default nuclei templates are for subdomain takeovers, but I can tell you right now, A, they don't cover everything, and B, those are part of what everyone else is using as well. So the nuclei templates don't really help you either, but yet you still see people out there finding them, they're big payouts, there's some people that, that find a lot of them actually, and I've seen some people or heard some people before that get a little confused on how that works, why they don't find any, but a whole bunch of people find a lot. Um, so one of the main reasons, just to get it out of the way, is someone may be dealing with a whole bunch more data than you. Um, I just put out a tweet today of some of my automation. Um, I put in 150 seed domains of Inscope public bug bounty programs, uh, and about three hours managed to get about 51,000 resolved subdomains across all those programs. Um, so why I say you should automate it is because obviously 51,000 subdomains, scanning those, checking for subdomain takeover, like it's just something you'll never do manually and everyone, like everyone who is hunting for the bug is automating it. So this is really kind of an automation only bug type if you're interested in hunting this. That being said, you're really, I would highly encourage you to make your own tool is basically the point of this video. If you're not making your own tool to do this, you're not competing with everyone else. There's no public tool out there that's really, really, really good at finding these. You really are gonna kind of be making your own tool. Um, that's what I did. Uh, at some point, uh, I may make it public depending on how it works. Um, I'm still kind of working on it internally myself, but if I get something that works, I probably will make it a public project to try and get more collaboration and try and turn it into maybe like the front runner of the industry, but for now, it's, it's not. Um, but I would encourage people to go out and try and make a tool for it because there's not really a good current tool that does it. So, 
The other thing is some of these tools only look for C name takeovers and there's much more out there than just C name takeovers. So if you're using just like a subject that just goes out and looks for C names and looks to see if those C names have fingerprints, you're missing a huge chunk of possible takeovers because all you're looking at is C names. So using C name takeover, we'll start with that one because it's still worth hunting for, right? So C name takeovers mean that the subdomain or domain that you're looking at has a C name record in the DNS that points to another domain. So it basically just whenever you go to this domain, it will just redirect you to the C name. And the takeover happens when that C name domain doesn't exist anymore. So it's hosted on an Azure or something like an Azure website or a GitHub site or something like that, DigitalOcean, whatever. Someone was hosting a website on it that they took down, but they didn't remove the DNS record. So the DNS record is still there, meaning if you recreate the website with whatever you want on it, as long as the DNS record stays there from their subdomain, you technically took over their subdomain. So one of the ways to look for CNAME takeover is to basically hit the DNS records of any subdomains you find in scope and check for CNAMES. And if there are CNAMES, then go to those CNAMES and check and see if there's what people call fingerprints, which just means that certain services have a default landing page that you'll hit if the website doesn't exist. And where you would go to find those, once I get rid of my banner page here, is this repository by Ed Overflow and I think Cody and a couple other people that started it um, called Can I Take Over XYZ? Now, using this repository is kind of a bait because you're gonna load it up and you're gonna scroll down a little bit and you're gonna say, oh, okay, so here's all the engines, here's whether they're vulnerable or not, and here's the fingerprint for them. Okay, perfect, like that's that's great. So now I can go make a tool and say that, you know, for this tool, like this is the fingerprint I need right here and this tool, that's not correct. Where you'll, the reason why that's not correct is they were correct at some point, but they're not updated all the time because the fingerprints change as the services change and the landing page change, and that's part of the game. So the best place to go find the current fingerprints is actually in the issues and going through the issues and actually finding like short.io takeover or GitHub, you know, Gitbook subdomain or whatever. Um, some of these issues are linked on the front page. So like for instance, if I was looking for agile CRM, I, I really don't care about this stuff. I mean, I care that it's vulnerable, but I would go look at the issue for it and then scroll down and, and kind of read and make sure that, you know, everyone, you know, that in the comments here that it didn't change at some point. Um, and if not, then you can look at the beginning, the proof, the C name records, and there'll be a fingerprint. And then that's what you would go for is you'd say, okay, so anytime I see a C name, that's something.agilecrm.com, and it has this fingerprint, sorry, this page is no longer available. I could have it ping me, notify me, email me, whatever, that whatever subdomain was, a, was C named to this agilecrm.com C name, domain might be available for takeover. Now, again, you have to do more research and make sure they, they are still able to be taken over and, and whatnot, right? But the issues here down the side and even in the issues tab up here are what's gonna tell you the like current fingerprints currently if a pro, uh, if a service is take, like able to be taken over or not. Um, so the issues are your friend. Just so you don't get confused when you go to this repository, you wanna go through the issues not just the front page, the issues. Now, outside of CNAME, when you move away from CNAME, most people will be like, okay, good, I'm done. There's more. And the next kind of step would be name server or NS and mail server or MX takeovers. Now, all you're doing is something very similar to CNAME, just like not quite the same because there's not a fingerprint all the time. But all you're doing is querying someone's DNS and seeing the name servers. There's normally multiple nowadays for a lot of them, but you're querying all their name servers, for instance, let's say, if they have NS records, and then you're going to those name servers and seeing if any of them are available, right? And if they are, let's say uh, my domain, you know, sub.example.com has three name servers, name server one, two, and three, and the third one ends up being able to be taken over. 
technically speaking, since there's three name servers, each name server should get a third of the traffic and then they'll redirect you to a domain. So two of the name servers are legit and one of them I was able to take over, which ideally means in a perfect world, a third of the traffic will go wherever I tell it if I take over that name server, which then means you can redirect, you can use the name server to be like, oh, this subdomain actually points here and, and yada, 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 right? And you can do very similar takeovers, okay? Now, there's also help for name server takeovers. And it's a very similar repository called Can I Take Over DNS, which provides, as you can see at the top, a list of DNS providers and whether their zones are vulnerable to DNS takeover. Right, so you see double zero or triple zero domains, Route 53, Azure, Bizland, Cloudflare, uh, DO, DNS Made Easy, DN Simple, whether they're vulnerable or not, and then a fingerprint for what their what their uh, name server domains look like. Right, so anything star dot nscloudflare.com is a Cloudflare and it's an edge case whether or not it's vulnerable, but like DigitalOcean. So there's normally name server dot digitalocean.com. And then there's takeover instructions on how to take it over. So if you find a DigitalOcean name server that you can take over, it says it's vulnerable and there's takeover instructions and you should be able to take it over and ideally take over someone's domain through name servers. That's something that there's a lot of the public tools that a lot of people use that are a couple years old don't do. Um, and it's very easy to automate. You just have to take the time to do it because it's just simple DNS requests. You're just requesting someone's name servers. Okay, I got their name servers. Now, are any of them not responding, like unavailable, like they're not alive anymore? And if so, can I register that? Right? Like it's like DNS is very straightforward. And if it's not for you, then then I suggest you go, you go look at it before you watch the video. Um, and I could make another video on that if needed. Uh, just let me know. In the comments below you know anyway name server takeovers here and it's actually really the same thing for MX takeovers so mail server takeovers the same thing there's vulnerable mail servers if you find a mail server that's not responding that that is available to be registered register it it's yours the only thing with that is technically you don't take over the subdomain you can't route traffic like a name server all you would really be doing is capturing someone's email so depending on what mail server you took over, it could be a really, really high impact thing or really low impact thing, but mail server takeover technically exists as well. And then lastly, there's what I would kind of consider the arcane arts of takeover, um, dangling DNS and dangling IP addresses. What that kind of means, and it's changed over time, is for instance, like in AWS, there's dangling IP addresses where every time you boot up your EC2 instance, you get a different public IP inside of Amazon's IP space. So if someone does their DNS records wrong and points to an old IP, and then the EC2 instance reboots to a different IP, but they don't change their domain name or their domain records, there's an IP address there that's no longer their EC2 instance. And someone can come along and basically brute force that IP in that region of AWS until they get it. Now, I say it's arcane arts because AWS, Google Cloud, and a lot of other services have tried to stop this and mitigate it and like kind of keep each group of people to a group of IP addresses so you're not just brute forcing across a whole region or something. Um, so I don't really do much of it right now, and I am not the right person to talk about it. Um, if you go online, there's a lot of good blog posts to read. There's a lot of good research to read. I mean, people do like whole theses on this kind of stuff now because security in the cloud is such a big thing. But that kind of stuff is where a lot of people survive and thrive in like really full-time hunting subdomain takeovers is dangling DNS, dangling IPs, and really learning how these cloud platforms and third-party platforms work and utilizing it to find bugs like this. The one thing I would caution if you're going to do more research into dangling IPs and dangling DNS is make sure you're reading current research like probably within the year because very recently in the last two years, like I said, a lot of cloud providers have done a lot, a lot of work to stop a lot of the brute forcing and a lot of the automated like dangling IP takeover where you just grab and drop IPs until you get one that you want. Um, so I would make sure you're kind of reading something that's pretty current to make sure that you're not reading a method that doesn't really work as well anymore. 
because um, you run into that, which is one of the reasons why it's kind of an arcane art. So I hope one of the things that you've realized from this is that this is something where the better you become at actually knowing how DNS works, how subdomain takeover works, why it exists and how to find it actually increases your ability to find the bug. Not just running someone else's tool, not just finding more domains to run the tool, because if you're running an old tool or you're running a tool that everyone else is running, one, you're probably not finding everything, and two, you're trying to find what everyone else is already trying to find. This bug type, the reason why I want to put a video out on this is because it is a prime, prime example of a bug where a lot of people struggle, but there's still a lot of them out there for people to find that people do find. And the real gap is really just knowledge. And then again, like I said, th this one is one that's really just, if you're not automating it, you're not really hunting for it. But the only difference, like the programming skills required to automate it is so, so, so low. Like it could be a bash script, it could be a Python script, it could be anything. It just takes the knowledge of being able to go and look at these repositories and be like, okay, so if I wanna go look through AWS stuff, like here's all like here's all the name servers right here for AWS. So, and it's very public information what IP addresses are AWS's, right? So maybe you go through all of AWS's infrastructure and pull stuff that has similar you know DNS data to bug bounty programs, and then check all their name servers and see what happens. Like that could be automated. Like I don't know, maybe people do that, maybe people don't. But some of these cloud providers that have you know, can have name server takeovers and dangling IP or DNS takeovers and subdomain takeovers and CNAME takeovers and all this stuff, their IP range is is public, right? There, there's nothing saying that you can't constantly be looking for in-scope bug bounty resources or assets on these IP addresses and then trying to find these vulnerabilities against them using simply their DNS records. Um, that's really all I have, guys. Uh, I hope this kind of encouraged you guys to go look into Subdomain Takeover and check it out. Um, I hope you guys like it. Uh, find me on Twitter. Find me on Twitch. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to stream soon with some of my automation stuff and, and answer some more in-depth questions there. But for now, peace.